In our previous videos, we were drawing the Lewis structures and figuring out the shapes of molecules where the atoms were satisfying the octet rule. I want to spend some time in these next videos looking at exceptions to the octet rule. We previously saw examples of elements that are okay with incomplete octets, boron being the big one. We saw boron being satisfied with just three bonds in a molecule like BH3. It makes a nice trigonal planar shape. Beryllium can also be satisfied with an incomplete octet. Beryllium only needs four electrons around it when it forms covalent bonds. Now this is a strange case because beryllium is a metal, and we generally think of metals forming ionic bonds. But beryllium has a relatively high electronegativity. So when it bonds to things like chlorine, for example, the electronegativity range gets it into the polar covalent area, and even the percent ionic character gets it kind of into that covalent range. So when beryllium bonds, it can form two covalent bonds with four valence electrons and make a nice linear molecule. More interesting to me, though, are those elements that can expand their octet. Now remember, the importance of eight electrons comes from the fact that your s and p orbitals are filled. So to expand an octet, to go beyond eight electrons around an atom, you need to have d orbitals present. You need to go beyond the s and the p. Well, the d orbitals don't start to exist until the third energy level. So in order to expand the octet, we need to talk about nonmetals that are in the third energy level or higher. The elements that you see most commonly expand their octet are phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. They're all in that third period of the periodic table. And then xenon can also form some compounds. And xenon is a noble gas has to expand its octet if it's going to form any compounds because xenon already has an octet in its natural state. So with this knowledge of expanded octets, let me ask a question. I want to know what the Lewis structure is for the sulfate ion. Sulfate is SO4 with a 2 minus charge. So I've got six valence electrons in the sulfur, six in each of the oxygens, so that's 24 in the oxygens, and then two more because it has a negative 2 charge. So that gives me 32 electrons to play with in my Lewis structure. Sulfur in the middle, oxygen, 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 bond, 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 bond. I just used eight electrons, so I have 24 electrons left. Go around the outside, I can put six in each of the oxygens. And that consumes all of my electrons and satisfies the octet rule. Now it's an ion, so I'm going to put the whole thing in brackets and put the charge on the outside. However, if we look at formal charge here, we know that each of these single bonded oxygens has a negative one charge, right? Oxygen has six valence electrons to start, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a seventh electron from the bond. So that gives me a formal charge of negative one. So I have negative one on each of these oxygens. And then sulfur, well, sulfur has six valence electrons, and then because there are four bonds, that gives sulfur a positive two formal charge. That's a lot of formal charge going on there. Remember, we're trying to get the formal charge as low as possible. Sulfur can expand its octet. So what if we take this Lewis structure and draw it with double bonds? And if you replace two of the single bonds with double bonds, let's look what happens with a formal charge. Double bonded oxygen has a formal charge of zero, right? Six minus six. The single bonded oxygens have negative one formal charges. And now sulfur starts with six and now has six bonds around it. It has a formal charge of zero. That's much better. When we first learned to draw Lewis structures, we probably drew the Lewis structure of sulfate with just single bonds. And that's totally fine. That satisfies the octet rule. But the correct Lewis structure for sulfate actually has two double bonds and two single bonds, because that reduces the formal charge and takes advantage of the fact that sulfur can expand its octet.